A movie that proves the hardest thing about being a woman is walking in high heels. <laughs> we saw Switch, so you know what that means. Theater in Boston for the first show of our Balcony Monsters tour. And let me hear you, Balcony Monsters! We're talking about a movie tonight. The year is 1991, and Steve used to have a preference for blondes. Then Steve was murdered and came back as one. Will being a woman make him a better man? That's the premise of this movie. Someone is murdered for simply being promiscuous and then is forced to come back as a woman to see if any women would like it. I don't know. It's confusing when you actually stop and think about it. All you need to know is that Ellen Barkin is playing a man with a New York accent. We'll get into all of that, but to break this movie down properly, I need my two co-hosts. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! <laughs> What's up, jerks? What's up, Boston? That's what I'm talking about! These balconies are the best balconies in the biz, baby! Yeah! Fuck New York! Fuck New York! Fuck New York! Fuck New York! That's what I'm talking about. I'm already exhausted. <laughs> already exhausted! Jason... Paul? This is a video box that I saw Obsessed. as a kid. Always, right? Obsessed with this video box as a child in video stores, looking at it like, this is sex. It was Ellen Barkin, pants down, hanging from a no, gun is barrel. No, she pants down or is she no pants? Oh, I see. Pants are around her ankles. Yep, yep, And yep. she's in a, a, a clearly a man's shirt and tie. I didn't know what it was about, but it seemed very the, sexy. And, and it, it makes the gun seem so much more important to the story. Yes. The it movie felt poster, like yeah. this was a crime story instead of what it is, which is a question mark, unclear story. I will say that I was shocked when I hit play on uh, my Apple iTunes and it said... Flex. And it said, a drama. No, did it really? A drama. Wow. And I was like, huh, I didn't I'm realize curious. this is a drama. Paul? When you, because uh, yeah. we got Jimmy Smith here, when you pictured this movie, yes. not Jimmy Smith, but did you have in your mind anybody else for the male lead, who is Riptide's Perry King? Yes. Uh, give oh. it up for Riptide. Those are the old people here. <laughs> Riptide, one of the greats. Uh, I swear, and it's just because she was in another movie with him, that this movie starred Dennis Quaid. Oh, interesting. No, I, I... But that's the big easy with Ellen Barkin and Dennis Quaid. Another also hit. Also so sexy. Very sexy. This movie, decidedly not too sexy. I mean, Disagree! We... <laughs> we'll get into it. And we have to get into it with 
our next co-host, please welcome to the stage, Miss June Diane Raphael. How are you? I'm okay. How are you, Paul? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. June, you were watching Switch about 30 minutes behind me. We were both on an airplane. And again, we are on some sort of federal list, some FAA watch list, and we should be. Yeah. Well, so am I, we but it has nothing be. to do with what I'm watching on the plane. Again, and I know we've said this before, but it is, you know, we fly economy and, and, you know, sometimes main cabin plus, sometimes not. And I, I can only imagine what it's like to sit behind us and see two people watching the, the movie switch, not at the same time, not on the same computer, on different computers. And one of the, and, and both furiously taking notes. And underlining, circling. Imagine the stories the people right around you are telling. Get this. I, Do you remember the movie Switch? I saw not one, but two and, people and watching get this. it. They were taking notes on it, like they were writing an article, yeah. and they had kids. They had children. And they were watching the, the movie Switch with their kids. And here's the only part of that that won't make sense. No one knows what Switch is. So when you open it and the first scene is a bunch of women seemingly naked in a hot tub, it seems way more creepy. <laughs> like, there is no Ellen Barkin. There is no Jimmy Smith at that point. You're just seeing a Joe Beth Williams and a bunch of people that you may or may not recognize. And it seems weird that I'm like, bloop. Watching a hot tub movie. Uh -huh. And then not 10 minutes later, I start, I start it up to watch the same scene. It's just very as if, odd. As if, that's as if you very saw Paul odd. watching it. As if you saw yeah, Paul watching the, it, it's like, me, that's a great idea. Let me get into this. And I also will take notes. <laughs> We've got a cross-country flight. That's a perfect idea. Well, June, there is one person who flew across the country to watch Switch with us. A How Did This Get Made All-Star in Her Own Right, co-host of the podcast Deep Dive. Please welcome Jessica St. Clair. Jess, welcome to the show. I want to ask you your connection to Switch. Did you also remember this video box from the video store? I didn't jerk off to this video box, no. Um, your loss. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, when I saw this, this, just the still of it, I thought, oh, thank God, no trash can fires, no yeah. aliens, no Mario Lopez. I said, I'm looking forward to a rom-com. And that's when I invited my parents to this show. Oh, no. My elderly parents. <laughs> and I'm then... Sure, sure they love being referred to themselves in that way. <laughs> they're going to get scarce in a second. But I, uh, once I saw the hot tub scene... I then quickly called my father and said, you're no longer invited. <laughs> because I knew that it would be an hour and a half of Jason saying, penis, dick, dick, dick. You are saying it now. You're the only one saying it. You're the you're only you can go it. fuck my face. Remember when those girls... <laughs> Madam, okay? that is that you are projecting. <laughs> By the because way, the only I have person done... your father has heard say those words now are you and your daughter. I will say I have done this show... I have done this show uh, with Jason for 12 years. I've never heard him use the term, fuck my face. Not yet. Nor do I think I would. Not yet. Now, the op that opening scene, which again, I watched on a plane with strangers, um, I loved. 
The hot tub scene. The hot tub wait, scene the hot tub was scene. Okay. amazing. I want to say amazing. Is now, this why the way that these women dress in this film is what you dream of for both right. you and me to wear every single day? Yeah, Here's it. what I'm gonna say. Love Here's it. what I'm gonna say. Every woman in this movie looks <laughs> dynamite. Thank you. We should be wearing those clothes. T to B. From the top to the bottom, from the hairstyles to the outfits, to the chandelier hat. earrings, to the chandeliers. Absolutely. Joe Beth Williams wearing one of those indoor JBW. hats. JBW! She's I the do, lady of the 80, even though this is a She's 91. amazing. I do want to call attention to one part of the hot tub scene. We'll break down the whole movie, but the hot tub scene has the best ADR of trying to be sexy. Um, so I wanted just to play the hot tub scene and just listen to all the ADR. That's the additional voice recording. Like clearly, after the movie, you're like, oh, we need to sex this up, and you will see how they did it. Oh, hey, Margo, hey, looking Margo. good there. Woo-hoo, Margo, oh, sexy. Unbelievable. <laughs> 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 Slick, you are something else. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, Margo, it's my turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what do you mean? I'm sitting here with three beautiful women who said they hated me. I got to be dreaming. We still hate you. (laughs) We decided you should be punished for the way you treat women. Oh, yeah. Men like Uh you just have to be stopped. Now you're going to stop me. We're going to kill you. So that is... <laughs> Love it. That is the opening scene, which looks to me like they are in a pot, like a cauldron. It is so much steam is coming off of that hot tub. It is that they are they're burning themselves alive. I mean, It's a little hocus pocus, that's for yeah. sure. Well, I thought, are these women witches? Because there right. are a bunch of them. Yes. Okay. Every time we see three women together, we must think they're witches. Oh, okay, wait a second. If they're whores, but it's here's Jessica. The patriarchy! Jessica, if there were one more woman on this stage, we would be witches. It, we just would be. But it's so interesting, Paul, because when Paul and I, right before we were about to leave, we were, we were talking about the movie a little bit because I put it back on because I wanted to see the beginning again. And Paul said, ah, oh, I just, honestly, I just wish they were witches. And I was like, what? And he was like, I just oh. wish they were witches. Well, well can I, please. I agree 100%. You wish they because, were witches. Because the movie's predicated on a bit of magical realism. Yes. And wouldn't True. it be better if they weren't murderers who murder a man for being a womanizer. For being they, promiscuous. They That's murder it. him. Wouldn't it be Shoot better him. if they taught him a lesson by yes. um, putting a switcheroo on? I thought it was an interesting concept because it would be like, they need to have some magic here, and that would be a fun twist. And I'd also argue that the one thing that's not acknowledged at all is his ex-girlfriend's like, hey, come over to my house tonight. We're going to have a party. And then he sees two of his other girlfriends, and he's A, fine with that, and kisses all of them, so were they a thruple? And if that, they were. I think it would great. be quadruple. There you go, right. So I, I was confused even about like what the plan was. Were they always hanging out? As no, a... their plan worked. They murdered him. Yes, but, yeah. but when it gets they in the door. They murdered him and then God? This movie has, this is a faith-based movie. <laughs> I think this is a prequel to the child trafficking movie that's going so bananas right now. This is clear. Uh, so then he's in, per, in limbo or purgatory, and he's given a chance to go back, and, and like God speaks to him, and the devil visits uh, uh, him later when he's, uh, when he's Ellen Barkin. The, this is some nuts-level stuff that would be well, much better if they were just witches. witches. I don't, I, but and I this don't is what know. they okay. wanted. But here's the thing. So I hate to jump to so much later in the movie, but when we find out that Jimmy Smith is a rapist... <laughs> Oof. It's a That's tough, a real oof. It's certainly a tough pill to swallow. It sure and is. And it's 
and boy, do they try to make their way around it. But at the end of the day, he's a rapist. Okay, so that's but, a pe- excuse me, that's a, <laughs> that gets a period. That gets a period on the end of that statement. And period. So, and which, by the way, she was about to get, which is why she got knocked up. I, I do wish she had gotten her period. But I, but that's why I, I, by the time the movie ends, I'm like, oh, they absolutely should have murdered this guy. Because if Jimmy Smith is a rapist, who's probably the nicest man we see in the movie... And we know that our barometer for masculinity and for what's acceptable is Jimmy Smith, who is a rapist. I, I then want, I'm like, yeah. She, no, this is no a choice. movie about murderers and rapists. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the, all of the protagonists are either guilty of because murders or rapists. This is a movie that flirts with two best friends fucking and they couldn't pull the trigger. It would have been so much better I wish they if had. they just fucked. Because well, they want to. Well, I mean, that's did, the thing. Because did anybody, they want to. I have a question. Did anybody else think that somehow, and this is not in the movie, to be clear. This is not in it. But I, initially when I was watching it, I was like, oh, because remember when the devil comes to Ellen Barkin and says, yeah, we should have a baby like Rosemary's yes. baby, blah, blah, blah. I thought the Jimmy Smith's pregnancy thing was cover for the devil giving her a Rosemary's baby. Did anybody else think that? Because you thought when she, like, when she collapsed on the pillow saying, like, I have my period, you thought then that devil with the mid-Atlantic accent (laughs) fucked her from behind? I don't think it's a (laughs) mid-Atlantic accent. I would say it's a straight-up British accent. No, it goes in and out. It comes and goes. Can we we play the clip, The Devil's Plan? Tell me if this is mid-Atlantic or British. This is the devil's plan. This is straight up a Baltimore accent. Excuse me. Yes? I wish to lodge a complaint. What What is is it this time? I have as much right to Steve Brooks' soul as you do. That's why I sent him this back. This sounds like Matthew McConaughey. One that's a British him, man! So no, he is it's not! Well, that's not a fair test. He'll pick some helpless, unsuspecting female. Pretend to be everything he's not. In the end, she'll adore him. Mid-Atlantic by applause? Yeah! I- British! I... I'm, I'm gonna mixed. go. I'm, I'm comfortable with neither. <laughs> he is in and out. I, I don't know what this guy's up to, but once again, this movie, the two, like the, the voice of God or the angel or whatever, the, the, the light. man and woman voice of God, they're two voices. Okay, so yeah. the, that, those voices and then the physical representation of the devil should have so much more impact on the events mm. of this movie. Yes. You know, because they're the ones setting it in motion like the rich guys in trading places. But they don't even reveal the plan. Like, at least in a movie like Brewster's Million, like, you have a, a five days to spend a million dollars. Like, I don't think that anyone ever tells Ellen Barkin the plan. Like, no. oh, no one ever says, oh, you are back on this earth to find someone who loves you. She kind of pieces it together. No, she does get told. I think somebody says to her... Is Mid-movie. It- like oh. an hour in. Like, she is okay. living I, as I a woman. I do think you're right that this movie is rudderless. Every, it, it is... It has no... It's unmoored. It, it is like... It, you can't... Because her plan... Because a, a number of times watching the movie, I was like, what is she trying to do again? And it seems that to find a woman who will love her, which, of course, ends up being her own daughter... Because for a split second. For a split a, second. A, literally a fetus that's second. produced. Like, like, you couldn't get any more fresh baby. And like, right. got it. Ding! Like, that's unfair. That's an right. unfair love. But and that's, he, a sa- that's a failure. Like, if he genuinely loved the baby, that would be a win, I guess. But that's like instantaneous. That, that's not a win. I don't well, think that that's a win. I teared up. I, obviously, I did, too. I cried hysterically. I hate myself. Duh. Yeah, I cried hysterically. Um, I'm a woman. I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, oh, because her pursuing her objective in the movie, Ellen Barkin, which is to find a woman who genuinely likes her or loves her, 
The only way she does that is to call up people in the past, which is so odd because she's she already knows, Steve already knows. That they hate her. That they all hate her. So it's a tough It's a shortcut. Sell. Like Steve, yes. Steve, to track Steve's progression, you would think he's a straight up fucking moron. And the movie, wor- I think the movie works as well as it does simply on the shoulders of Ellen Barkin doing, I think, phenomenal work. Oh, she's amazing. I mean, I will say, were it not for this incredible physical performance, this broad, funny performance, this movie I, would be a hate crime? I, I will have, say, though, they go to the well of the heels too much. Too much. Dis- Too much agree. to get, get oh used to God. it. Disagree. I thought it was funny. I, I oh wrote it in my God. thing. Jason. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I felt seasick. It was as rudderless as her balance, I, that, the film. And I did. I we even wrote, two in heels. I wrote, she's doing so much, period. I love it. <laughs> Listen, she's so charming, and those bangs oh, are going to get you far. You know, they're going to get you real far. But she, I was like, they're, how... The fact that we are presented with a movie that is telling us the learning curve of walking in heels is 50 days? <laughs> like, you must spend three months Or get a pair of heels. flats. Why not get flats? Looks like a pup, feels like a sneaker. It's available yes. in 1991. For, a, for tried. a movie that is trying to show what would it be like if a man became a woman, the only gag they had was like, well, it must be hard to walk in high heels. Like, they don't deal with peeing, they don't nope. deal with a period, nope. they don't deal with, they don't deal with like, running, running. Now they deal I with guess. running with a bra, and I did laugh, you know, I thought that was Wait, funny. now let me ask you this, because I agree with you, Jason, like, Ellen Barkin is very good in this, but I remember a story, like, when Tom Hanks did Big, he's like, oh, I hung out with this kid, and I, I took all of his mannerisms, and I really was able to figure out what, you know, this kid is, so I could be the bigger Josh Baskin. It feels to me like Ellen Barkin never met Steve or watched any dailies of Steve because Ellen Barkin's like, hey, I'm a New Yorker. He's doing like an Al Pacino. Yeah. I'm like, well, who is this guy that you have it become? Is. It's as if she is like, was it turned into that from a taxi cab driver. Okay, yeah. but New York here's, cabbie. here's what's so weird but about I, the yeah. movie. This is where the movie gets Incredible. crazy. <laughs> so I think we're in for a switch. You know, the title. Your classic switch. Yeah. But yeah. that's not even a switch. Well, yeah, but it's also the fact that this movie dives into homosexuality and her not being able at, in a woman's body to be attracted to another woman, even though she is attracted to that woman, but there is a block of some sort, but doesn't want to have sex block with a man. Is homophobia. Yeah. Okay, is but, it though? I but, thought. I, he's a man. He's a man in a woman's body. Right. You would think, oh my gosh, this would be a great thing for me to explore because I never got to do that. Right. When, when. No, but he is. Okay. No, but he That's can't. what's weird about him so, not wanting to the fuck movie, his friend. Steve, the Steve movie as a man is a homophobic. The movie can't go there because Steve is, is a homophobe regardless of his gender. So he I doesn't. Think. Like, wow. But he's not even Steve, attracted. Wow. So it's like he can't eat. All right. So he can't even be attracted to a beautiful woman who wants to fuck him because no. he knows that yes. mentally she only wants to fuck a woman. That's Here's right. the thing. The yes. minute, wow. the minute I realize I've got tits in a vagina, I am jerking off hard. The minute. By the, the way, minute, a I'm funny like, what scene. What is this? How does it all work? Any opportunity I get, I'm going nuts on my guts. On yourself. Well, on myself. I, on yourself. On myself. Okay. And then, f- and then figuring it out with everybody else. Absolutely. Well, figuring it out. Okay. It's, I'm going to be like, fuck my face. Damn it. Uh, I knew it was coming. I will say this. I will say that this movie is rudderless and unmoored for the first 43 minutes or longer. But there's a part of it where I'm like, is the premise of this movie that the only good woman is a man? Because hold on, the only good woman is a man. Yeah, I don't be- think so because, because the movie goes out of its way to make sure you know every single man in the movie is full stop unredeemable. But the every man is a piece of shit. But she never 
as experiences any hardship as a woman because whenever a man is a piece of shit, she's like, fuck you. She Bam. punches like, him in the face. Right, she, like this whole turn, I think the idea of it is should be like, oh my gosh, my good ideas aren't being taken. My this isn't happening. She, she would, uh, yes, it happens for a second. She says, oh, this, that was my idea. And then the guy, and then she says to the boss, like, fuck you, that was my idea, you piece of shit. Like she never shows low well, status. Well, you're right, Paul, because what, what we want, what I wanted was to see her realize what it is to be a woman and to see her kind of understand what he, she, he has been doing to women and, and learn that. And it doesn't really happen because her response is just like, is so masculine and she's just like, oh, I'll just, you know, punch this person. That we never get that satisfying and understanding. Now, the well, other those... the thing that's a bummer about this movie is also you you leave it feeling like, oh wow, I guess the only way that men can realize like women are humans is to be in their body. But but actually, they can't even then. Right. So no, it doesn't because at Duke's at Duke's the hangout where everyone knows your name. Um, but if you come in with a short haircut. They oh. will be very upset. <laughs> okay. Just the haircut. I had that haircut senior year of college. Okay. I did. You did, <laughs> you did not have that I did. Haircut. She had very something very well to for it. myself. I assure you, she did not I have did that haircut. Have Your haircut exactly that was haircut. arguably worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but she says, in the only moment of self reflection, she says, you know what? Being a woman isn't half bad. And that is like the only insight we get that it's not half but bad. But the Man. movie, the, I feel like these kind of switcheroo movies, and it's usually people getting put into each other's bodies and having to walk a mile in their shoes, blah, blah, blah. This is not that because it's just a, a gender switch, but it's, there is, exactly to your point, there is no incremental learning. The only learning that gets done is by the third act, he can walk in the high heels. That is the Barely. only Barely. They missed a golden opportunity when she is identifying his body that she doesn't trip into the, the, body, the dead body when they pull the cadaver out. I'm like, that would have been a funny moment. But I, I will say that it seems like she really learns the most about being a woman when a stronger woman tries to have sex with her. That, and he's like, well, now I know. And then all of a sudden, he's quoting, like, date rape facts. It's like, when did you learn that? You, it didn't when seem like you were you learning learn any that? of this. Like, That's where... exactly right. It's right, only in the very end that Steve seems to have any, uh, a, a, any understanding of what's happening and, and, and a point of view from a woman's point of view that has, we have not seen get learned at all. We've only seen him be predatory and difficult, but in a woman's body. I think the only thing he realizes is that a snaps beneath bodysuit is tough stuff. It is. I, I'm I, on listen, the record. I, they I, should be illegal. I'm in June one right it. now. I'm in June one right loves now. It. This is a bodysuit. You know, I'm in this one right now. She said that is the least sexy moment when Lorraine Bracco just says, unsnap it. <laughs> like, that's made me feel sick. I don't know. I, li I like this. I will. I... I will say... I didn't mind. I like that scene. I, I will say that there is a, uh, a flaw in God's plan, which is, you'll hear her, I'll tell you. How dare you criticize God in Boston? The flaw in God's plan is simply this. Steve is shot three times. He is in the river dead. Where's Ellen Barkin from? She, because Steve is brushing his teeth... And then becomes Ellen Barkin. So that this body just appeared. Like, yeah. there's no switch. That body is still dead. It wasn't like they changed the body. Like, where, where was Ellen Barkin before this? Ellen Barkin is... Again, this would be better if they were witches. Witches. I'm totally seeing that. Because, I'll be honest, God is fucking this up. God is making a mistake to keep that man in the river, and it should have also been the devil who fished him out, but uh, again, I could won't we, get into all that. Could we also just talk... I'm sorry, we're all over the place. Paul, you need to yeah. get better control over right. this podcast. 
I think we're doing great. I just want to... I want to go back. We haven't even gotten to Jim J. Bullock and the Parrot. Oh, shit. Oh, but wow. one of the most... The scariest, and I mean it, I was actually scared, is when he comes back to life and is coming after them... That's oh my God! Oh yeah, tied up. I you was mean like, when they is- when they fail at their premeditated desire to drown him? Yes. And then Joe Beth Williams pulls a gun out and shoots him five times. Yeah, three, but three. These- Thank three. you, June. Is, Thank it, you. is it only three? It's only three. One bullet That's for still each woman. A lot. One That's bullet a- for each woman, that so is they all are guilty. A lot of murder Here, from Joe Beth. Here's Williams. what I will say. <laughs> he deserved it. That no, he I did. disagree. I never once thought he didn't did deserve not it. How fucked up is that, June? I do think he deserved it. I do think he deserved it. I do I think he, he a thousand it. percent deserved it. And and the reason why I don't know put that again. Tr- don't put us in a jury because he deserved it. I do think he deserved it. And the reason why I do is because of what the movie has told me about his best friend, who's arguably like a better guy than him. So, a man who doesn't even call it fucking. He says, "Make love." But I don't That's think Jimmy insane. Smith deserves to be murdered. Okay. <laughs> Agreed. The audience, the audience believe. He I should be know. sent okay. away. He yes. should be sent away. Jimmy Smith has I committed mean, a crime in this movie. He's raising he's her a crime. daughter. <laughs> Going back to that old that opening moment when Steve is being drowned yeah. at the beginning of the movie. That's a violent scene. He is underwater for a long time. And then you feel in the movie like, okay, that man is dead. The women get out of the hot tub. They're putting on robes. They're toweling off. One's smoking. Time has passed. They are nervous. They're nervous. They are. But time has passed. And then all of a sudden, how how does he rise up? He is dead. I mean, if he held his breath, it, I mean... And hearing him slosh around toward them. It was genuinely terrifying. It was now, scary. I will say, though, to, to that scene, again, that hot tub scene, he's about to, he's about to eat out one of those women, okay? That's, a, that's what's about June, to happen. June, our children are, are here. I'm sorry. They're gone. We're They're about, gone. He's heading down, and then they fucking drown him? I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, in my What a life. way to go. What a, what a way to go. <laughs> I wish in college that we had done that for a scene study. Do you know what I mean? It's one of the best scenes I've ever seen. You're right, it June. It is unprecedented. <laughs> it was surpri- it's, it's very rare to be truly surprised. Yeah. And I was like, wow. wow was Should that- they... I simply We're gonna wasn't expecting kill that. You. The movie then should be about those three women and I what happens disagree. to them. I don't it shouldn't disagree. be about him having to go through a supernatural nonsense. It should be about them. And the next time we see them, doesn't have to be in a limo eating a large tub <laughs> of ice cream. I was a tub? No, I'm not talking about a pint. She I'm is talking eating, about that is a paint a can. A two gallon tub of unmarked. This is- Commercial grade industrial ice cream. industrial ice cream. They Let are getting it. You. That is cafeteria that, that shit style. That was wild. They stopped at Emac and Bolio's <laughs> Boston <laughs> reference. Pulled out okay. of nowhere. Where did that come from? The ice cream scene. It was. It was such a reminder of the references of the early. Like we were. There's so many movies where women are in a panic and, and in crisis and turn to ice cream. And it is a trope of the early 90s, the late 80s. Oh, 80s. Meg Ryan yeah, is very 80s. I'm a chocolate kind of shirt. I'm heartbroken, yeah. freezer, bonbons. Yeah, All these talking. things that I understood women to be yeah, and it as is, a child. Yes, and I do that as well. So I but guess here's there the is thing. Not so do true. I. Not so do true. I. Everybody mm. eats ice cream when they're sad, right? Just, I don't know. I don't know if men do in the way I'm that I'm lactose intolerant, so I eat an Italian there's, ice. There's, there's, <laughs> and I feel great about it because oh, light. Because it's such low it's calories. Light. I will say one thing I'm really upset about, Paul, is that 
Paul is lactose intolerant, everyone. Okay? We're my lactose intolerance! Woo! Representation. No milk. <laughs> but our son, who you saw earlier, has taken on the identity of somebody who's allergic to dairy. And I'm like, you're not allergic to dairy. <laughs> That's stolen valor. It's Stolen valor. Oh, it's so crazy. And he's, he's like, always asking he, me for a lactate. Dad, always. Lactate. He's like, I'd love to have that, but do you have a lactate? And I'm like, you're fine. And it's so strange. It's so strange. And it feels like both Paul and I are also like, we don't have the energy to withstand a day without a lactate. So we're constantly giving it to him. <laughs> Not gonna hurt anything. I mean, that's what you I'll, keep on saying. If but you I don't want, know. I'll let it. I'll let him carry my EpiPen. He would love that. <laughs> By the way, another part of this movie that we probably won't get to, but I feel like I want to just explore with you at one point. Why are we wrapping up? No, yes. I'm just saying. This is the start. We can we can share it with them. Okay, I'll share it with you. One of the things that I really am fascinated by, and I was saying that we probably would get to it because it's not a natural thing to get to, is. Ellen Barkin works at an advertising agency, and they are bad. Those ads on the wall are bad. Like, when I look at it, this it's like is... a, a wine glass against, like, clip art, and it's like, wine. Or there's, like, yeah. a computer. Like, they're in, like, the highest class ad agency, and every ad is dis- I could make it. I could make that at home with, like, clip art. It was so shitty. Yeah. Also, the boss. I thought was Will Ferrell from the side. <laughs> and I mean no disrespect. None. Tony Roberts. Tony Roberts, everybody. Classic but Woody Allen. A dome. That hair was so insane. He looked you, like... And honestly, you don't see that hair on white men these you days. You don't. Where did it go? With like the skunk stripe? There, oh, it where wild. did it go? He's getting this a perm. Is, this That's is, a perm. Yeah, That's this, a perm? It's either That's a perm, perm or this perm. is a... This is, a, I don't know that it's a perm, but it is definitely pre like mousse and hair styling gel. Men didn't do stuff to their hair, I feel like, in this era very much. Wow. I think it might be. I remember my dad in the 80s coming home and he was looked so stricken. And my mom's like, What happened? He's like, You know, Jerry, he got a perm. And the guy walked in the office just like, Hey, fellas, and didn't mention it, but he had Ooh. just like a kinky, curly wave. That's upsetting. That is upsetting. I once met a gentleman. Wait, that's upsetting? It's you gotta upset. call it like, out. That reaches for you the level of upsetting if a guy gets a bad haircut. It's not a haircut. It's not it's a haircut. A perm. And if you're gonna get a I went perm, to you have to own up to it. With a kid who got a perm. Really? Yeah, and it's weird. You gotta call it out. I also went I also oh, I went knew. to school. I went to Swamp Scott High School right here. Woo! I would say 80% of the people had perms. Men too? Everybody yeah. had a perm. I feel like this is an, a, a, a small blip. Like there was a, a moment of like perms, mullets, like there were things like feathering. Um, I remember I met a man who got a toupee just in the middle of the week. And that's, yeah, that's work you're, go- you're going to want to do over the weekend. You're going to yeah. want to do a Columbus Day weekend and come back with it. You can't oh, walk day. in. That, and that's then, a four day conversely, I also worked with somebody who lost a toupee in the middle of the week. <laughs> and then didn't want to, no one ever wants to address it. You got to address it. If, you've I got, know. if you wear a toupee, you've got to have a backup. You can't live yes. in a world where you don't have a backup no, toupee in he, case you lose it. Like, he was like, now I'm done with this phase of my life. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Toupee life. And you know what? I have to say, because I feel like women are in a time and living in an era, thank God, where we can put extensions in, weaves, all sorts of, all manner of things. We could wear a wig. We could do all manner of things. And it's this day, it's that mm-hmm. day. Nobody's fact-checking us. Nobody's worried about where that hair went. And, you know, yeah. I... And I wish that for men. I wish that they had that type of freedom. I agree. I wish I was less uh, wig-phobic for men. You know, that's something that I didn't need to switch bodies to figure out. Well, do you... Yeah. About you, myself. Because here's the thing. I swear to God, if we were in a situation where we then went and spent time with a man who was in a wig, both of you would be like, what the fuck was that? 
What the fuck was that? Absolutely. I, I did Listen. respectfully. I disagree, and I suspect a man wearing a wig would feel June no. to you the same as a man drinking tea. By the way, I and I think you're it's right, possible. and I I it's I possible. think that I am a part of the problem. That I have. I have been breathing in the culture and I can no longer see it. I totally agree. I am a part of the problem. Agreed. But I want to dismantle that for myself <laughs> Me and too. for my sons, you know, yep. for everyone, really. I, 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 I wish that for all of you. That's beautiful speech, June. Thank uh, you. A world in which everybody, no matter their gender, yes. is just throw wearing a wig. Throw some hair one day, take it off the next. That's right. <laughs> God help us. God bless. God bless. Would Uh, you, would the first thing, I'm going to ask this to Jason, I'll come to you in a second. Would the first thing that you would do, Jason, if you became a woman, I know the first thing that you would do, but (laughs) the second thing. Fuck your own face. I would be like, how does this work? (laughs) Finally, I can figure it out. Would the second thing you do be actively flirting with all of your friends? Because that's what Steve aggressively does on day one. He's like, you got a hard on. Flirting with Jimmy Schmitz. Like, he, he is, like, is that funny to him? Because it also feels like that's creepy. Wait, sorry. The question so, is, would you, would I, if I was, to, would I mess with my friends by flirting with yeah. them? Yeah. I don't know that he's doing that as a goof. I, I almost feel like people are giving him the attention because he's now a beautiful woman that he is trying to, he keeps trying to tell people who he is, right? But he, he also is kind... I mean, would you agree that he's... He kind of, doesn't want Jimmy Smith to have a hard-on for him, his no, best friend. He doesn't but he want wants her to the touch boss. the... No, he, do, he wants... He ev- just keeps calling it out. Everywhere, every yes. person that Ellen Barkin passes has an immediate erection. And that isn't her fault. Or, that's just it, how, or, that's or how she's calling them out for their shitty behavior towards women, i.e., hey, Tony Roberts, I know you have a secret apartment where you take the women. Or to the building super? <laughs> how does... Like, this movie exists in a world in which the men are constantly gifting the other men in their lives women. I gave you that hey, redhead. Is that I, true? I, sent you, I, I sent you that brunette. You remember? Bop, 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 bop. And I'm like, this is the building super. But maybe what it's... What the fuck is going know. on? You I know, don't know. You tell me. In some ways, this movie is a po- post-apocalyptic movie. Go, you know, except, go on. You know, in that this is a dark web of men. And I don't know. I was yes. alive in 1991. I wasn't, you know, in the advertising world. But if this is at all what things were like... Well, this is like... But this is similar to, like, The, the Apartment, the Billy Wilder movie, The Apartment, yeah. where all the executives have a, 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 an apartment they, go, they want to go to to use for, for sex, you know, away from the, their wives, you know? This is, and this is, I feel like, part and parcel of the same old boys' nonsense that the movie should be attempting to dismantle... But instead, does not. And instead, yes, that's exactly right. Instead of learning about what it is to be a woman, what Steve ends up doing is leveraging what it is to be a man yes, in this yes. world to protect and keep herself. And the only of, good you're woman, like a man. Yes. The only good woman is a man, is I think that the premise that this movie keeps on kind of put, like, if is only a woman line, was a man. Is that what you just came up with? <laughs> no, I think that I was writing that down because I, you know, I, I was like, oh this woman. movie is like, the I'll tell you why how women will be better if they if had they a man like controlling men. them. I see. What then you're they would saying. be better. But I will say this: um, we do get to see the other side when they go to the gay club okay. restaurant. Whoa! That so, looks like okay, okay, okay. we got uh, roughly the next. The rest of this the show will the rest be devoted of the show. to this scene. The rest of the show is only this. By so the bu- way, I just up, want assholes. you to know this: talking in this show has made my. Apple Watch track energy. It's like you've done your rings. This show finished my rings on my Apple Watch. Okay, let me say something. You said you would love to have seen a whole movie about the witches. I would have loved to have seen an entire movie about whatever that space was, okay? Like, what, and yes. also starring, starring... The security guard, a woman named Nancy. 
Love Nancy. Nancy. Give me Nancy's movie. Where's Nancy's Where movie? Where is Nancy's movie? So Nancy, who's the woman <laughs> at the end, who steps in for Lorraine and is like trying to figure out if like sh- if this person's causing a problem. I was like, is first of all, is she a security guard? She looks like the bouncer, and she seems to know. Um, she seems to know Lorraine Bracco if, from being at the club before. So I'm assuming it's either a friend or she works there. But it seemed like works there. Okay, because it did seem like she was also really integrated into the goings on of mm-hmm. that space. And I've never, you know, I've been to a few lesbian bars in my day, not to brag, but I've never seen. Something like that. Something that is Something. fully lit, fully lit. Bright so as many day. strands playing as slow, day. slow big band music, <laughs> and the clientele is all white femme women. Yes, long Period. strands oh. of pearls. Period. It Every looks, couple is yes. like femme beyond. It looks There's like not a butch woman in the entire can't club. Can't find one. Won't find one. The aesthetic is. Yes. Very old, old Hollywood. school, old Hollywood. They even start on the pictures on the wall. This movie came out in 1991. But this is like a speakeasy. This, it's like. But in 1991. I know it's like it's so secret to be gay. You in have New to like York, knock twice. You know, and then a, a light turns every, around. Here's the thing every person, and including everybody who made this movie, every person in everybody's homophobic. The movie is homophobic right. on every level, I think. Is Jim J. Bullock playing into that or playing against it? <laughs> Jim J. Bullock is, is repeatedly referred to with the F slur yes. uh, for a gay man, which is absolutely it's so bana- insane. So casually. Even to his own answering machine. Does he call Jim J. Bullock and leave it on his own but answer machine? Please, wouldn't it have been amazing? Wouldn't it have been amazing if when Jim J. Bullock, who is the psychic that uh, 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 the character goes to to seek advice, if the psychic reading was given through the mouth of his parrot, why isn't the spirit... There's a parrot there. They keep cutting to the parrot like it's a character in the movie. I kept expecting it to talk. Wouldn't it have been great if the parrot was the voice of the spirit? You know what? Come on! He had... His spirit guide had accent problems. That was a problematic oh. accent. The movie is so homophobic, and I, I, I should have spent more time on this because the, the lesbian scene, like the movie perceives or thinks lesbians are hanging out in brightly lit, I think carpeted? Yeah. Like, ball, like a ball. ballroom. So oh, yeah, yes. Like Our carpeted. restaurant has wall-to-wall carpeting. Carpeted ballrooms, and that they are dancing, they're slow dancing together to, like, classical music. Like, they're it's, in no, eighth it's grade. Like big, it's like big what band it was swing it? It music. Was swing it's music? like they're ballroom okay. dancing or but something. But there's no band. Wild. It's all piped in. That's somebody playing that as a and track. And that they're all dressed in, like, cocktail dresses. Such a, I've never seen a portrayal of a lesbian like that. Mm. I mean, it really, I mean, I'm, just, I just question put it in whether the, anybody in the movie is a human being. <laughs> I just want to put it into context one more time. This is the same year that Terminator 2 Judgment Day comes out. Home Alone comes out. Robin Hood, Whoa. Prince of Thieves. Like, this is 19... This feels like if you said 85, I'd be like, okay, that's a, a look at something no, that we don't... No, when you said 91 earlier, I was genuinely shocked. shocked. Because yeah. that yeah. makes no sense for this. And I will also just bring this up to a moment... This movie does dick around for a long time, and I think it's worth watching the most in, insane 90 seconds. It's like, it's almost like the moment in Home Alone where they wake up and they realize that they all get to the airport in like five minutes. This movie's like, oh shit, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. We don't have a plot. Go. And then in 90 seconds, this goes down. Just watch this 90 seconds. You're under arrest for the murder of Stephen Brooks. You invited Mr. Brooks to the party. Yes, but he never showed up. She's lying. You're a witness. When did you meet the defendant? The morning after the party. What did she tell you? That she was Steve Brooks reincarnated as a woman. What else did she tell you? That I shot him. Who? Him. Her. What else did she say? 
That God had sent him back. Would you mind speaking up, please? That God had sent him back and that he couldn't get into heaven until he found one female who liked him. him. Steve. Her. But she was drunk. No, I, I wasn't that drunk. <laughs> you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. State your name. Stephen Brooks. And prison. Five months, Walker. You got to get me out of here. I'm doing the best that I can. So how do you feel? How do I feel? Five months how later. How do you think I feel, Walter? I'm going to have a baby. Your fucking fault. I'd like to strangle you. That's how I feel. That's 90 seconds. The first? More plot happens in that 90 seconds. I was going to say, the first... I mean, more than two-thirds of the movie happen in, I'm going to say, a week. Maybe not yeah. even the course yeah. of maybe four or five days for the vast majority of the movie. And then from here until the end of the movie takes months. She gestates a human. She, she gets... Nine pre- months. Yes, for nine months, gives birth, then dies. Then her daughter is five years old, but visiting yet, her grave. But then I will also say that the reason why she dies, or the re- reason why we understand that she's going to die, is because she's like pre-diabetic and has high cholesterol. But if they didn't switch Wait, bodies, really? Yeah, yeah. That's why she dies. High she blood has pressure, high blood pressure, and diabetes, and so she dies in childbirth. Yes, yeah, right. Okay. So, I, yeah, but I felt that. like, well, who's body is she taking those ailments from because Steve is in the river. You know what's interesting too? You're really doing a lot of science. You're what's doing so too, much medical work on this Like she should be a pretty fresh body. Hoo-ha. Remember? But, they, but I forget what this is but I have it in my note. When she goes to prison right prior to that all the women are back in the hot tub? Yes. Oh, That's yes. where they do their meetings. It, what, what the what is that? That's where they do their oh, witch meetings. Let's get back in the hot tub. Like, that would be, remember when we murdered someone? Let's go hang out in the hot, in the murder tub. But don't forget, Lorraine Bracco is in her own gigantic tub when she answers Listen, the phone. Jessica, I, I will be thinking about her that tub for a long time because there were three to four TVs set Like, up. she was calling like a sitcom, like, go camera A, go camera C, <laughs> from her tub. From her tub. And I was like, wow, that's so dangerous. Yeah. To have that I amount wish, of electricity. I wish that Ellen Barkin had smoked the cigars more. I loved when she became like a cigar chump and it made me feel like this was, I would have loved it more if instead this was like, oh God, and oh God, you devil, yeah. or whatever. I would like it if it was not, those no, if it was a switcheroo with an old man, like who smokes a cigar. <laughs> like, that's what it felt like she we, was doing, like George Burns or something. <laughs> but this is the thing, it's like you need to understand who you're switching with, or it's weird. It's like Jumanji, I really like Jumanji, and there are the new Jumanji, but there are people in it that are acting just like the teenage avatars and the people who are not. And, like, Ellen Barkin is trying to sit uncomfortably. Like, you look at us all sitting here. Two men, two women. None of us uh, are like... legs crossed. <laughs> I love... I None love of us it. are leg up, she arm up. She has a Sharon Stone like, shot in the first one. Oh, I yeah. That loved must it. have been kind of racy for back then. I, I loved it. I, I, can't, I, loved it. I can't even do it. Not for... Not for nothing... <laughs> It made me laugh. That scene made me laugh. Oh, it just made me laugh, too. in the boss's too. office, like... <laughs> not even aware of it, just... What about yeah. when she takes a penthouse out at the barber? That, okay. So that, what I laughed right? so hard because, like... And this is really for old people, but, like, when you went to a barber shop, there were Playboys there and penthouse. That's what? real. At my barber shop, it's still there. Wait, it's what? Still there? No, Paul. Yeah. That's why Paul goes to get a haircut every three days. The only chance I get it to see. Wait, you were supposed to be sitting and flipping through beaver to beaver to beaver, leave it to beaver. Just checking out the beef. Yes, my barber shop. Give me this. My barber shop has tall on top. That. Paul, our children go to that barber shop. I can't. It's, Wait, it's right on the racks. It, they're I vintage. I can't understand. 
they're Go vintage. Ahead. I mean, it Go doesn't ahead. make it better that they're vintage. Why? Why what? Because well, those... it's a gentleman's magazine, and a barbershop is a gentleman's domain. <laughs> but do gentlemen, did they read Playboy with one For the another? articles. For, with For the one article. another? But yet. Oh, yeah. But yet. Beef? That's oh, yeah. what you would do to your friends? I so, would, Jess. Let me be clear. I would <laughs> never. I would <laughs> literally. I know everybody's like, oh, come on. You're gross. We know you're gross. I would never be like, check this out to a... Bu-. I would be <laughs> mortified. I just feel like that's a private... That's a but private... Yet, I agree with you. It I is would private. hope so. I, I, I think so public, upset. Public I'm... pornos, public pornos, i.e. at the barbershop or whatever, is insanity. That's the cra- that's it's almost than like watching I just Jessica, saw the it's less almost... we know about men, the better. And that remains true. The, the less only we good know, woman the less is a man. Know. Stay ignorant. Stay ignorant. I will, ignorant. I will <laughs> no less, say no less. The the equivalent of like looking at porn in a barbershop is like watching Switch on a commercial airline. A hundred percent. and I also will say this. He's looking at a penthouse, but is disgusted by Lorraine Bracco. He's not, so here's the thing. He's, he's not disgusted not. Yeah. by her. He's, he's hot for her. He is, but he's managing his own hom- homophobia. Well, he, and I also think he says to her, which is true, the only reason he's trying to sleep with her is to get the facts in cosmetics account. But, and that's his... That, but I don't think that's true. Because that's, wait a second, I think that's what Steve would have done. Right. Is leverage his Classic sexuality Steve. to get yeah. the account. But he's also is what hot I mean, is all for I mean. Bracco, right? She's, yes. she's hot for Bracco. Because yes. she's all fumbling, like, oh, my God, I don't know how to unsnap it. And, like, that's... So he... Oh, yeah. She... Uh, okay. I honestly think something... Even though I just said it's homophobia, I, and I think it's a part of it, but I think something else is happening on a deeper level for Steve and his sexuality, which is to truly pleasure a woman, he doesn't know... <laughs> Because he now is a woman, Mm -hmm. he's confronted by something. It's like he... Well, he's not in the driver's seat. Yes. That's what's really uncomfortable for him. So it's homophobia, yeah, sort of. But it's also something else is happening in that moment. And that's where the movie does function as a drama because I'm like, there are some psychosexual levels happening here that like (laughs) my mind can't even wrap itself up. He passes out. Like he passes out because I do think... He's not used to maybe a balanced or giving up or giving in. Like she is she's gonna controlling requi- that moment. And she's going to require something that Steve, as a man, has never been able to do. Yeah. He's Get, gonna- wait, give a, give a woman an orgasm? Yeah. Yes, it's my yes, guess. Probably. I think Steve is being confronted with the fact that his masculinity or what he perceives of as his competence as a lover is in fact I a sham so. but so. it have and every woman he talks to in. is like he sucks like all the calls he's just yeah. being told constantly over and over again you are disliked by every single woman but here's what i would love yes. i would have loved for steve to be fucked by someone and be like wow that's what it's like like and because he was a homophobe for him to fall in love with his best friend, who he has a natural connection with, and then have sex with him, I think would have been a very fulfilling ending. But they turn it into rape, and it's like, oh, it's so. Just but geez. here's the thing: it's you, always a bummer. You it's cannot leave. You cannot leave Smiths with NYPD blue balls. No. This is why I sent it's, my parents <laughs> home. That's a that's a solid joke. Solid joke. Yeah. Solid joke. Let's Wait. let's go into the crowd. I want to talk to the audience and see if they have anything that they want to talk about. From Discord, somebody whose name is Frog Gahaha. Where are that? Was that over there? Okay, we're gonna over come there. to you first because you have an interesting point that I'd love you to pitch out over here. Okay, you, he's looking at cliff notes of his own writing. Um, <laughs> all right, what's your name? Uh, it's Jeremy. Jeremy, welcome, Jeremy. Jeremy, what is your question? I'll hold the mic. Okay, yep. Um, why, at, why at the end of the movie would Steve want to be a female angel in the afterlife when throughout the movie, Steve was still his old piece of shit stroking his self? Agree. I agree. <laughs> I mean, the movie wants you to believe he's learned something, but I just don't think it's shown us that 
that learning, I, I don't think. I don't think so either. But I also feel like... Is he a woman? Is he a, does he become a female angel? It ends on a he cliffhanger. That's the sequel. He never decides. Oh, like, because I I'm don't sorry. think the movie wants to say that men are better than women or women are better than men. I think they want to both sides now, which, by the way, how did they get Joni Mitchell? I, I don't mean, know. It's they my, must it's have literally. punched her in the face. We've got to talk to Joni. What? Ladies I and have... gentlemen, Joni Mitchell. <laughs> That was so tough because that is both sides now is actually Bookended. I will say my favorite song. I know. And I love that song so much. I think the lyrics are so beautiful. To hear it at the beginning <laughs> of the movie, I was like, okay, what's happening here? Why is my favorite song being played? And then to hear it again at the end, it was really it was tough. It I was mean, could you? Oh, yeah. it was devastating. It was really, for how infrequently really Joni Mitchell songs are used. That's in what movies, I'm saying. I've never for this heard one that to be song used in a movie twice in this garbage. I, and Come by the on. way, that that song should be in every movie. Like that song is so important. Those lyrics are so important that to be to hear them for the first. I think it's the first time I've heard them in a movie. Oh to yeah. To hear them in this movie was so shocking. I didn't but I will wanna, say, I it didn't set me up for... This. I didn't want to reveal this. Oh. Joni Mitchell saw this movie and was like, you have to put one of my songs in it. <laughs> she was like, never <laughs> have I seen a film no, I that don't believe gets it. it. And they said, well, you know, she's like, take them all. And they said, we really, <laughs> we'll just use one. And so, yeah, that's... An interesting, fun Joni fact for you. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, your, uh, your name. My name's Lindsay. Is it okay for Jimmy Smits to marry a woman who has been institutionalized <laughs> for her to marry her rapist while the cardinal who is marrying them is clearly not okay with what is going on? Great question. Great question. I don't think she, to be clear, I don't think she's been institutionalized for, like, mental reasons. Yes. It says a mental... Yes. Because she oh, thinks... Really? Oh, I thought she, she was in prison. She Steve. I'm sorry. I thought she was in prison. No, yeah. so she is institutionalized. I misunderstood. I misunderstood. Because I think she should be locked up. <laughs> right. Lock her up, question mark? I love that even at that wedding, only the orderlies showed up. Like, no family. I think like, they had to be there, babe. I don't think they showed up. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I agree. They're but, on the clock for yeah, that one. I think they're, they're You on think the clock invitations went out to just the orderlies? <laughs> Save the day. She is charming. But where's Jimmy Smith's family? Poor Jimmy. I mean, is Jimmy in love with his best friend? Yes. Was he always so. in love with them before he turned into a woman? You think? I mean, I do That's think he thinks question. this is the best relationship he's ever been in. And the I, friendship. And, I, then, and the, then when she, when he gets that ass that he can't stop touching. I do think that that's one of the questions of the movie that it can't answer and won't is the sort of homoeroticism between two male friends. Wouldn't it be you know, interesting? I, Wouldn't it be interesting to investigate sort of, that? Wouldn't would it be interesting to, know, to investigate? I'd love them to switch back and see how they feel about each other. Or for even Ellen Barkin's character to speak to the, yes. the, that, a, a, a transition for them in terms of attraction or whatever it means to be now engaged in, a rela- in an actual consensual relationship with Jimmy Smith. Because the movie is like, well, if they have sex, it cannot be. Well, and also, this, this movie is so crazy because the way that, and this is, this is what I mean by how, like, the barometer, the male barometer in this movie is so distressing because the way that our, our Steve in Ellen Barkin's body addresses his own rape of his body is sort of like, ah, you fucking did it. <laughs> you crazy cad. Like, you raped me while I was asleep. And... It's so distressing. Your name and your question. My name is Florencia. Okay. And um, first of all, I think 
one bit of physical comedy that I really loved was Ellen Parkin was always wearing her purse directly around her neck. Thank you. That was a really interesting Thank choice. Thank you. I yes. mean, it's choices. Con- it's choices. convenient. You can sort of rifle around. But, yeah. Weird, um, though, that she doesn't know how a woman wears a purse. Yes. Strange. Not Never weird at all, because she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but she still looks Watches at a woman. She's not women. Starman. But she knows how people behave. You've seen Starman? No! <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew no! it. No! You're a goddamn liar. But my, my question has to do with sort of earlier on in the movie where I was like, where's the, where's the point? Like, where, yeah. where's her sure. <laughs> ambition? Um, I thought for a minute that she was going to befriend Margot, where right. they were hanging out in her bed. And I mean, yes, she is blackmailing her. But, you know, they're they're. Happy. She could understand Margot. She could be, oh, I would have killed me too. Margot is saying, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Margot's saying, well, of course you can't make out with that woman. You are a homophobe. Right. Um, I thought. Like, oh, are we going to have a moment of, like, woman-woman friendship, which is actually one of the nice things about being a woman. Sure. And just, what would the movie be if we went that direction instead of forcing this male-female relationship with a rapist? Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't it have been great for for Ellen Barkin slash Steve? Yes. Yes, give it up. It's a great yes. point. For the movie to be about Such the friendship that bur- that comes out of her and the woman who murdered and her. And she ends who up shot loving her. her. That's, that's and she a ends movie. up liking her. That's what I mean. That's, yes. a, that's a movie. movie. That's a movie. That's a movie. That's, that's a movie. movie. Any, uh, that's a movie. That's a movie. <laughs> Thanks, Mario. Um, you're, oh, wow, you have, a, you have a nice screen grab here. Okay, this is, okay. Your name? Okay, your name? Uh, Jake. Okay, Jake, go for it. We didn't really talk about the director, who's also the director of Breakfast at Tiffany's, but he, he wrote and directed this movie. He also wrote and directed Victor Victoria. Correct. Correct. Oh, wow. Okay, so he Whoa. did this. It's Blake Edwards. He this is this. a Blake Edwards movie? Yep. The Pink Panthers, Blake Edwards? Skin deep with John Ritter in a glow-in-the-dark condom. Uh, Jason, it gets worse. Um, okay. Do so not did... talk to me like that, sir. I deeply apologize. So he did an interview uh, when he was promoting this movie, and I'm not going to read it word for word, but he went over not showing the uh, date rape thing and the abortion issue and um, also why he made this movie. So he didn't show it because he said it was towing a fine line, but originally the, the, the date rape was in the script and the people funding the movie made him remove it. Um, he said that while he's pro-choice for others, deep down he would uh, keep the baby and that the reason Steve did that it was chestnut. because um, the reason Steve did it was because he's the only man to ever have that happen and he wanted to see it through. Um, and then he said, I'm just going to read this because it blows my mind. One of the things that drove me to write Switch was to show what it's like carrying a baby. Wow. What? This this is that movie? Because I'll be honest, that only <laughs> happens in the last seven minutes. I mean, he must have been pissed when Junior came out with Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like, wow. the amount of... They, they give the same amount of time to the baby as they do to the Twin Towers in the last scene of this movie. <laughs> oh, God! Too far? Oh, Too, soon? Too soon? Never forget? Wow, that really got me. I do know that one scene that was edited out was test audiences uh, did not respond to the romantic subplot between Ellen Barkin and Lorraine Bracco, so they cut that. Oh, so there was more. There, there was, was there more. There was an actual... Oh, interesting. Because that's what it seemed like. It seemed like a will they, won't they, like I want to see them get back together and love each other. But that no. would have been amazing. Yeah. But... Uh, 1991 was homophobic, is what we understand. Yes. Okay, so here we go. I mean, that, by the I way, I don't think it's point. limited to just that year, ma'am. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's the one year we had. 88, 89, not homophobic. 1991, very homophobic. As, someone, less, as fine. someone who in that era lived in Boston, <laughs> tough town. <laughs> All right. You know, obviously we have an opinion about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for second. Opinions. 
Steve walked like a man, talked like a man. That's why his life is done. Donna, Donna, now he is a lady. Donna, Donna, Ellen's walking crazy. Donna, Donna, Walter is acting rapey. Donna, Donna, now they have a baby. And that she died as she gave birth. Good thing she changed and now has worth to enter heaven straight from earth as woman or as man. It's time to look at both sides now. This movie got five stars somehow. Review delusions with enthrall. Or do we not know films at all? Thank you. My name is Cassie. <laughs> Thank you. Great job, Boston. Great job. Okay, these are five-star reviews uh, cold from Amazon. There are 733 total reviews. The average prime rating is 4.7 out of five stars. 80% of the reviews are five-star reviews. Let's start with Kevin, who writes, like blazing saddles and airplane, some things were just done so well no one tried to top it. This seems like one of those. Five stars! Title, Enduring Comedy. Now, I would make the argument that many people have made this movie. A lot, right? Body switching, men, women, bo yeah. I, I think people have tried to top it. I think they have, right? Mel Gibson? What, wait, no, that's just he can hear what women want, right? Oh, then, okay, then, then yes. But I mean, <laughs> it's similar territory. <laughs> uh, Jen Ann? She was in a movie called Switch, right? Yeah, she switched jizz. Oh. Yeah. All right, so maybe it hasn't been done. All right, this person was right. Um, Sonny writes this. Funniest Wait, move. did you just agree with a second opinion? <laughs> this is the first time in history that a second opinion convinced you. <laughs> Blazing Saddles, Airplane, Switch. Enduring American comedies. <laughs> Sonny writes this, funniest movie in the genre that we've ever seen. Ellen Barkin ought to have earned an Emmy for this role. A real hoot. Five stars, the title, Ellen Barkin ought to have earned an Emmy. But Emmy's in quotes and for is this. It, is it Alan Barkin? You seem to be saying Alan like Alan. A. Alan Barkin. It is Ellen. Okay. Alan Barkin, but an Emmy... She would not be nominated for an Emmy, but I guess an Oscar was male, so the joke might have been an Emmy? No, this is no joke. This is a moron. <laughs> Emmy is in quotes, all right. And then... Uh, Ellen Barkin should get an EGOT for this. <laughs> <laughs> and our final one from Jackie L. Adams. Great movie. I laughed till water came out of my eyes. Five stars. I like that. I like that as if... As if Jackie is confused. What is this? What is this water coming out of my eyes? Help! This movie produced... Help! <laughs> Till water came out of my eyes. I will say this. Yeah. This movie is a remake of two films, Goodbye Charlie, and a, uh, that was a Debbie Reynolds, Tony Curtis comedy, and Angel Number no. 9, an X-rated film about a heartless, despicable womanizer who is reincarnated as a woman who then falls for a heartless, despicable womanizer, written and directed by R Roberta Finley. Its tagline was, the first erotically explicit film ever made by a woman. And, was, and, and this was directly a remake of that? It says it's a remake of wow. two films. Okay. Um, they, uh, they also... Has anybody seen those movies? Angel number nine? No. Next rated Boston, film? no. Um, this Most one, of you have, and you're like, I'm not saying it. Um, this I'll one, wait and talk about it at the barber shop. Uh, Ellen Barkin may not have gotten an Emmy, but she was nominated for a Golden Globe. Uh, she lost to Bette Midler in For the Boys. And, uh, and this is uh, the final moment here. In the last scene, CPR is given by the doctor but it's just above the left of the navel. That is the incorrect place to do it. No. 
So just we some facts. We didn't even talk about as she's pushing the baby out, she was using Jimmy Smith's penis as her stabilizer. <laughs> that seemed appropriate. <laughs> Movie was a hit. Budget fourteen million. Total gross fifteen point five. Came in number 84 in the top 200 movies of all of 1991. It beat out Drop Dead Fred. Body parts, Stone Cold, Nothing But Trouble, Mannequin on the Move and Cool as Ice, but it was beaten by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Look Who's Talking To, Hudson Hawk, and Highlander 2, The Quickening. So there you go. All of those did better than this? There you go. I mean. Wow. Wow, indeed. I think I, Can I just... I just have two quotes of lines from the movie that we didn't cover that I enjoyed. One of them is, again, I don't think we've given enough credit to Jo Beth Williams, who I think is absolutely totally dynamite phenomenal. in this she's movie. She's phenomenal. And dynamite in everything. She always is, yeah. They're walking she's... across the they're di- across the sidewalk into the car. She's wearing a fur coat, and someone says, uh, do you know how many poor animals had to die to make that coat? <laughs> jo Beth Williams... Do you know how many rich assholes I had to fuck to get this coat? Boom. So good. Boom. Home run quote. Home you know run. what? That's so good. I'm not even going to read the other one. All right. And this I want to just, perfect. I think, <laughs> describing oneself as being built like a brick shit house. That was amazing. Is underrated. I know. I do want to call attention to one performance of somebody that I love Catherine Keener? Yes. So, Catherine, Catherine Keener, Keener, can we play that I'm clip sorry, I of stole Catherine that. Keener, I stole the that secretary? From you, Paul, no, don't worry about it. The, the secretary clip. I gasped. Uh, this I is did a, too. a great little moment that we just have to call out where the secretary is crying. You're a sister. Huh? Well, half sister. We only just discovered each other a few days ago. Oh. Oh, because I've been a secretary for two years and uh, he never said anything about nothing, it. Nothing, nothing. Did you, uh, did you look in the drawer? Yeah, I did. Let me have a look there. You told Amanda that he was going to chuck it all and be like Gauguin? The painter? I can't believe that he wouldn't call me. Hey, wh- wh- what's this here? What? What? It's a note. It says to Walter. But where'd you find that? Uh, in the drawer. But I looked. Dear Walter, I'm fed up with my life. I decided to chuck it all and start again like Gauguin. I asked Amanda, my half-sister, to stay in my apartment while I'm gone. Take her to lunch. You'll like her. She's got a great pair of... So long, Steve. What's the matter? He's really gone. Yeah, it looks that way, sugar. He, he always called me that. Jesus, he must have been really crazy about him, huh? <laughs> oh, I, I hated him. I just, I always cry when I'm really, really, Sweet. really happy. <laughs> It's great, great performance. Most realistic well performance done. in the entire film. It's great. It's also that watching that, it makes me realize, like, be, and you telling me it's a Blake Edwards movie, and you didn't tell me this motherfucker right here did. <laughs> your Put brother. your hands down, asshole. <laughs> That's your half brother. This movie thinks it's like a screwball comedy, like a goofball. Yeah. Like she walks in, she produces the note. The note says everything that Jimmy Smith just said. It's it, the, the movie yeah. thinks it's hilarious in like a can you believe it kind of way and it's not in the sanitarium where she is pregnant and there's a very dramatic scene there's just a man bouncing off the walls yeah. in the background I love that man and I loved Catherine I loved him and I loved Catherine Keener because you know she barely gets a close up in this movie Yeah. you know who else she doesn't be- get much Taya Leone that's young right. Taya Leone that's right, and I thought for sure Taylor Leone was going to be the woman that he f- pursues, yes. and is. I thought for sure we were building up to that. But it was just nice to see Catherine Keener in this little role, you know? It made me feel like maybe all the little roles I've done will <laughs> add up, add up to, to a career of Some, sorts. Someday, when someone else's film-based podcast is doing an episode, yeah, they'll be like, maybe hey, I'll, check I'll out be mentioned. when all of your kids are doing this podcast still. <laughs> 
and they're talking about only about the movies you guys have been. But truly, I barely I recognized her voice at first, but I didn't. They, we don't even fall on her face. We, and at that's the entire June movie, Diane she's in profile. From going the distance. Yes, I was in that film, Paul. I, <laughs> And give a great performance. Can uh, I say something that I genuinely did enjoy about sure. the movie? How often most scenes ended in a fist fight. Always. I, lo- I loved how much, if Ellen Barkin's character punched this many people into unconsciousness, she would have broken hands for the whole movie. So you would recommend it? Oh, yeah. June, would you? I would, actually. <laughs> Jessica? I would as well. (laughs) And you got a big old thumbs up from me. That's a four. That's a fourth thumbs up. All right. uh, Quickly, plugs. Any plugs? I I have a plug for you guys. Uh, Deep dive plug. Here we go. uh, Yeah, deep dive, please. If you would like to pursue your degree in significance, the doors are open. This academy... Of significance, we have a 100% acceptance rate. Yes. Okay? If you apply, you're in. Yes. And, and we are not accredited yet. Yet. Right. But school is in session. And you know what? Walking in high heels might be a lesson. That's true. Look out for it. Thank you, Jessica St. Clair. Thank you, June Diane Rayfield. Thank you, Jason Manzoukas. I am Paul Shear. Thank you for coming out. Bye for now. A big thank you to Jessica St. Clair. If you are not a member of the Deep Dive Academy, what are you doing with your life? The Deep Dive Academy is an outreach program from the Deep Dive podcast. Jessica St. Clair and June Diane Rayfield will be teaching you the ways of the world. It is truly amazing. I love it. Check out the Deep Dive Academy. If you want to make sure that you feel like you are part of that show in Boston, well, you can get yourself a shirt that we designed with the audience that night. It is in the style of those ampersand shirts. It says Blazing Saddles and Airplane and Switch. Just white lettering on a black shirt. Go to tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. A big thank you to the Wilbur Theater and their staff and our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas. If you have a correction and omission from this episode, I want to hear about it. Go to our Discord at discord.gg slash HDTGM and leave me a voicemail at 619-PAUL-ASK. If you're not listening to Last Looks, you're missing out because Jason and I, every week, are on there answering your questions, which you can leave me at the same voicemail, 619-PAUL-ASK. And we're giving you deleted scenes. That's right. There's a deleted scene from this episode switch on next week's episode. Plus, we'll announce a new movie and there's plenty of other fun stuff. Remember, you can find us everywhere online, even Threads. That's right. How Did This Get Made is now on Threads at HDTGM. And you can check out our website for the latest news and information about where we're going because we will be back on the road. Also, if you listen to us on Stitcher, reminder that the app is shutting down as of August 29th. So please make sure to subscribe to our feed wherever you plan to listen to podcasts going forward so you don't miss an episode. We don't have a plan for what we're doing now that Stitcher's gone, so bear with us. And last but not least, I got to say thank you to all the listeners and Balcony Monsters who came to support this show every week, and then our entire team who this show couldn't be done without. I am talking about our producers, Scott Sani, Molly Reynolds, our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros, who makes those amazing social media videos. I love that Wheel of Fortune one. That's all I got. I'll see you next week on Last Looks. Until then, bye for now.